always practicing something. James Clear says, every single action you take is a vote for the person you wish to become. So today, I want to ask you, who are you in your life? What do your actions say? And who do you want to become? Hi there, everyone. At the time of this recording, it's the 25th of August, 2020. Spring is just a week away. We have 18 weeks left in the year, 16 weeks today till Christmas. Three quarters of the way through the year. And for many of us, this year hasn't been the one we were expecting <laughs> when we first started it. But that doesn't mean it doesn't get to be a powerful year. It doesn't get to be a transformative year. Today, I want to help you get clear about the version of you that you have been voting for with your actions. And I want to help you make a powerful decision about who you want to be. I want you really to decide on purpose who is the version of you that is living your life. Which one is it? And is it the one you want? And if not, let's make it happen. You know, as I said, this year, 2020, it hasn't <laughs> been the one probably you expected it to be, really, possibly not the year any of us expected when we were setting our goals the end of 2019 or in January this year. But we get to decide what the story of this year is going to be. Is it the year of COVID, of pandemic, of lockdown? A restriction is the year we undid our healthy habits we reverted or is it the year we took charge and turned everything around I always think our actions reflect our thinking it is our thoughts, our beliefs that create our feelings, that drive our actions, and it's our actions that produce results in the world. And so actions are a really good insight into what we are thinking and believing. And so I urge you to take a moment and think about what are you doing? we had to write down every single action, let's say that you've taken over the last week or over this month, what would we see? What would be on that list? And how much of that list is what you want to be doing? Is that 100%? Or is it some number that's less than that? I realize I better introduce myself. Hi, for those that don't know me, <clears throat> my name is Brian Granger. I'm a life coach and a weight loss coach, and I help serial dieters get off the weight loss roller coaster, get out of that diet mentality, solve the real underlying issues, and then make powerful new habits so they can get to goal and stay there for life. Actually create a life you can live. Very often, our actions are mindless, unconscious, automatic. They're just habits that we've been practicing many times. And that's a beautiful thing. There's so many things that we wouldn't have been able to achieve as a society, we wouldn't be able to do in our lives if we didn't have this process in our brain of making automatic habits. But we must remember that all of our habits are simply choices that we've repeated. It's a decision we've made, we've repeated enough times for our brain to automate the process. We don't have to think about it anymore. By repeating them, by coming to expect them, by reinforcing them, they become part of our identity. I wonder if that's happened to you. You know, when COVID first hit and um, 
you know, the initial stages were happening, there was lots of thinking about, okay, well, you know, this is a short-term thing, we just need to isolate for a couple of weeks, maybe a month, and then it'll all pass, we'll get past it. Now, <laughs> if you look at the epidemiologists and the, and the experts, if that had actually happened, we had actually restricted for two weeks, good chance that may have actually happened. But we weren't aware of asymptomatic carriage. We weren't aware of all of the effects so far. And not everyone, of course, was able to do that. Whether they needed to, um, they're essential, needed other things done, or they just didn't want to. So it's going on, perhaps longer than we had anticipated. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. That's the way it is. But I want you to think about you know, for many people, we went, oh, this is not normal. I'll just wait it out. I can, you know, I can give up some of my healthy things, my healthy habits. I can revert to some old healthy habits for a little while. But here in Australia, that all started in March, or end of February, really, start of March. So we're six months in, six months in now. And, you know, re no real end in sight at this stage with things continuing for now. So it really is time to think, this is our new normal. Are the habits that I'm doing now ones that I want to sustain? Are they coming from the person I want to be, ultimately? Have a think about how any of your automatic unconscious habits have become part of your identity. You know, are you a person who thinks... I emotionally eat. I have a sweet tooth. I can't stop. Or are you a person who always puts it off till later? Or starts again tomorrow? None of those things are facts. They're just thoughts. They're driven habits that we've repeated enough times to become beliefs about ourselves, about our identity. Are you a person who says, I can never stick to it. I can never say no. I can never achieve my goals. It's optional. You don't have to believe that. Do you want that person living your life? You know, if we only get one go at it, is that the person you want to be in charge? Or do you notice that sometimes you have a desire for change. You want your life to be different. You want to get healthier. You want to be kinder. You know, we want to be kinder to ourselves. <laughs> we want more joy and happiness and vitality. So are you being called to evolve, to level up, to become a new version of you? Do you ever notice your inner wisdom calling out to you? You don't really need that. You don't even like it. You're fooled. You could stop now. You'll feel better if you choose this. If you do this exercise, you'll feel better. There's another quote I like, and I, I can't remember where I first heard it from, but it goes along the lines of this idea that extra weight is not the enemy. It is the wisdom of life speaking through our body, asking us to listen and explore. So if you have some extra weight at the moment, and you have habits that aren't helping, that are coming from your fear, your doubt, your self-criticism, would you like to change that? Would you like to put a new version of you in charge? Because you can. Believing is optional. Um, we get to think whatever we want, and no one can tell us that we're wrong. We get to own our own thoughts. But for most of us, we're so practiced at listening to our inner doubt, our inner critic. We think that taking the time and taking care of ourselves is somehow selfish. That we shouldn't have pride in our accomplishments. We shouldn't spend time and energy and effort on ourselves. You know, we sometimes learn from our society, our peers, our parents, our 
social groups that we're only good people if we sacrifice ourselves to the needs of others. And I think that's a mistake. I think that's wrong. I think that it feels like it comes from a belief that there's a limited amount of happiness and success in the world. And if the, we take some, we're taking it from others. But my experience of the world is that that is a lie. What if that by ignoring our self-care, by delaying our self-care, putting it off tomorrow, putting other people's needs first, by not loving ourselves on purpose, we deny others and we die, deny the world the best version of us. We deny others the opportunity to rise with us. I've always found that when we do take care of ourselves, we have more energy, we have more vitality, we have more resilience, we have more happiness, we have more fortitude. When we take better care of ourselves, um, we inspire others and they aspire to be like us. It lifts everyone. When we deny that for ourselves, we keep everyone down. Do you think the people around you, if you are a person who's a people pleaser, if you're a person who serves others at your own expense, who drains yourself, do you think the people around you don't notice? Do they want better for you? And are you denying them the pleasure of seeing it? We so often don't think about that. We can look after ourselves. And I ask you to take note. When we do take care of ourselves, when we do show up and follow through with healthy actions, when we take a moment to love and appreciate ourselves for who we are, it feels good. It opens us up to do more, to be more. And we do a better job of relating to, inspiring and caring for everyone around us. It's totally available to you right now in this instance in this moment so who is living your life at the moment is it the best version of you the you who prioritizes your self-care who's deciding that this year is your year to turn around to solve the real issue to get it done or is it the version of you who can't be bothered, who doubts, who's frightened, who's scared, who's insecure, who's staying powerless and hopeless. You get to choose. It's not happening to you. It's a deliberate choice. Who have you got in the driver's seat of your life? Now, to help you today, I've created a worksheet. It's my self-appreciation worksheet to really help you get clear, to write down, to see for yourself, to discover the thoughts you are having about yourself, the actions you are taking. And you get to then look at them and say, is this aligned with who I want to be? And if not, what might that look like? What could I do instead? What will I commit to now? What do I want to believe about myself on purpose? powerful worksheet. There's a full week's worth of reflection and decision. So it's great practice. Uh, you can find the link to that, by the way, in the description. If you've gotten to spring and you're watching this and you're like, oh yeah, man, my goals not really where I wanted them in January. I want to reset them. Well, check out my video from January. It's video number 53 on goal clarity. It's a worksheet there too if you want to use it to um, reset and refocus on your goals for the rest of this year. I've got a quarter of it to go. Take this moment and ask, who is driving my current actions? Who is the you that's in charge? Are you aware? When it comes to making a decision about moving forward, 
taking action. When it comes to the decision about, will I do this or that? Remember, we are always practicing something, a healthy new habit, the habit we want, the life we want, or the habit we have, the life we don't want, perhaps. We're always practicing something, and every action we take is a vote for the person we want to become. So what happens if I do do this action? What happens if I don't do that? And what if you let the person you want to be decide? What if you let the future version of you who has achieved your goals and here achieved your dreams make the decision? And that might sound a little bit weird, but you really can in your mind go ahead and if I was already this person who has achieved my goals, who's made my healthier life, who's living the best version of my life, in whatever circumstances, but I'm living the best version of my life. How would I make that decision? What would I do? What actions would I be following through on? It's wonderful power. It's a wonderful way to connect to that innate wisdom, to that part of you that is being called to become the best version you can be. What do you want your story of 2020 to be? A year of fear, of disruption, of self-doubt, self sabotage Or do you want it to be the year that you took control, made a change, finally got these habits sorted so that you're on your way to goal? I love <laughs> this time of year. For me, it's a powerful time of year. Um, <laughs> I guess, I don't know, maybe it's an association I have. My birthday's in August, so it could be to do with that. But I do know this, that it was August 17th, 2006, that I started my journey towards a healthy relationship with myself and a healthy weight. It took me just over a year to lose my 50 kilos, and I've maintained them ever since. This time of year was powerful. It's a time of transformation as we go from winter into spring. I also know that 12 years ago, um, at the end of August 2008, I started coaching others on how to make this process, how to follow it through, how to make healthy changes you can live with, not just do for a little while. So this always feels like a powerful time for me. I wonder if you're going to choose for it to be a powerful time for you. If you do really want to start taking care of you, if you want to get this solved, if you want to understand the reasons why you've been making these unhealthy habits, why you've been overeating, why you're making poor choices, why you're letting yourself down, and instead you want to become the person who's got this under control, even if you don't really quite believe yet that you can. If you're ready, then doors are open right now for this week until this Sunday, the 30th of August, for my group coaching program, where we're going to spend six months together to unravel the unhealthy routines and habits and train in those healthy new ones to help you become the person you want to be. I've helped tens of thousands of people, tens of thousands of people make healthier changes and healthier choices in their life. And I'd love to help you. So if that's something you're interested in, if you're ready to make a change, then head to livemorelife.com.au and book a free consultation. Let's have a chat. Let's have a conversation about what you want, where you're at, and see if we're a good fit. I'd love to talk to you and see if this program is right for you. Whether you decide to do that or not, download the worksheet today. Have a look at who you've put in charge of you. Who is actually living your life at the moment? Maybe let me know in the comments which version of me is living my life. And then make that powerful decision. What if you make the you you want to be, the one who's in charge, the one who makes decisions? And start living accordingly. 
Love to see what you choose. Jenny, hello, welcome. Join thanks for joining me live. Yes, you said when you feel disorganized, it only takes a couple of minutes to organize my thoughts to schedule and then you feel better. But you have to decide to decide. <laughs> yes, it's so true. And of course, that's what we do in coaching. We help you master that skill of deciding to decide, to think your thoughts on purpose, to live your life deliberately. It's available to you now. Awesome. Well, that's what I have for you today. So I hope this video has been helpful. I hope you do step into your power. And whether you join me or not, and I hope you do, <laughs> um, make that decision. Put the version of you you want to be, who you want to become, in charge. And try making your decisions from there. Have an amazing day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.